on bringing the old me back. The mama know about these old trophy glass. She worth that be. Top of the morning, everyone. I brought some burgers and fries. Eat up. The protein soaks up the sugar. First, you take the cow to the killing floor. I came here for the same reason people go to the zoo. Shh, look at that thing. Nature is amazing. Okay, there is no food finer. For Leslie, that means whipped cream or... No, it's whipped cream. Everyone look in the whipped cream cans. Oh, got some. Nothing yet. Okay, something wicked this way comes once you peruse a book with your thumbs. Go to the one who succumbs, I'll be attached with a little gum. Oh, come on, Leslie, give me a break. I hate riddles and other such nonsense. I want that on the record. But something wicked with a book is my ex-wife from the library, which means I'm the one that succumbs. Uh, I'll be attached with a little gum. Good God, that woman is good. Follow me to the sheltered snow. Only 22 clues left to go. 22? Well, this is the woman I've chosen to love. Well, I guess there's nothing to do but spend the entire night methodically solving this puzzle. There's no way we're finishing time. Okay, I'll just make a list of places she and I have been together and hope we luck out and find the last clue. We'll split up, cover more ground. Move. Leslie. Thanks to your annoying prying last year, I'm sure you remember my birthday's coming up. I know, I know, no parties, you hate parties. Correct. Oh, you know that wild goose chase you sent Ben on for Valentine's Day? The scavenger hunt? I also do not want that. Yep, I understand. I absolutely do not want to solve a series of riddles and clues, each more intricate than the last. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I got it, Ron. Good. Uh, I, I do want that. Please do that for me. Ron! Hello, Andy. It's quiet in here. Where is everyone? The government is shut down. It's in every newspaper. How long is it going to last? Uh, if we're lucky, this building will be empty for months. <sighs> With current and projected deficits, we need to cut expenditures by 32%. Let's make it an even 40. Oh, that's not necessary. Slash it. Slash it. I am an official member of a task force dedicated to slashing the city budget. Just saying that gave me a semi. Right off the bat, we sell City Hall. Let somebody turn it into a large gas station or a TJ Maxx. Ron, that is a very creative idea. But we don't want to sell any of our major assets because we don't want to lose out on any future revenue streams. I hear that. Don't worry, I have tons more ideas. Okay, uh... <laughs> So sorry. New ringtone. Don't cut anything without me. This really attractive woman is my girlfriend, Lucy. Hello, Lucy. Hi. Whoa. Impressive handshake. Thanks. My father told me that a limp handshake was for weak men and communists. He hated both. Well done, Tommy. Is that bacon on your turkey leg? They call it a Swanson. Tomorrow, the Parks and Rec Department is receiving a commendation at the Indiana State House for bringing the Harvest Festival back. And although it's purely ceremonial, it's a huge deal for me to go to the State House. I couldn't care less about the commendation, but Indianapolis is home to Charles Mulligan's Steakhouse, the best damn steakhouse in the damn state. I have taken a picture of every steak I've ever eaten there. June 2004, Porterhouse, medium rare, Bernays sauce. January 2000, they call this one the Enforcer. February 96, the steak, ribeye. The whiskey, Lagavulin 16. And the lady next to me, a bitch. Specifically, my ex-wife, Tammy. Okay, this is, this is the first time I ever went there. <laughs> Look at me, just a kid. It is rough in here. Is it always like this? I wouldn't know. Don't like strip clubs. It smells like a wet mop in here. And I get the feeling that every one of these women is running a low-grade fever. You're one of the good ones, Ron. Wait a minute. Hello, beautiful. Strippers do nothing for me. 
I like a strong, salt-of-the-earth, self-possessed woman at the top of her field. Your Steffi Graffs, your Cheryl Swoopses, but I will take a free breakfast buffet anytime, any place. Excellent work, everyone. Particularly you, Ron. You have one very satisfied citizen. What did you do for her? Fixed her pothole. Is that a euphemism? No. Then great work. In fact, she's out in the hallway and wants to thank you herself. If you're here to complain about the pothole, I guarantee I did it correctly. Actually, I'm here to ask you out for dinner. Really? Well, I hope you're not the kind of man who needs to ask the lady out. I'm a middle school vice principal. I don't screw around. Does that freak you out? No, on the contrary. So dinner? Please and thank you. Well, it'll be casual. No need to wear makeup. I begrudgingly admit that the 311 program is a moderate success. I'm still not sure why the citizen decided to come speak with me in person, but I'm just happy to see a government program finally work. This came out. Yeah. I am starving. I haven't had lunch since yesterday, so I'm gonna head over to Callahan's. Oh, no, 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 don't go there. They totally skimp on pickles. Let me go to Big Head Joe's for you. They have the most insane burritos. I don't much go for ethnic food. No, 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 trust me. They have one that's called the Meat Tornado. Literally killed a guy last year. You had me at Meat Tornado. Pierre Garçon was a sixth round pick. Collie was the fourth round. Indianapolis Colts know how to draft so well. They really do. <clears throat> Andy, this was delicious. It's awesome, huh? It's a whole new meat delivery system. Thank you, son. What do you say we go out to the parking lot and run a few pass plays to burn off the calories? You are an unstoppable good idea machine. <laughs> I like Andy. I'm surrounded by a lot of women in this department. And that includes the men. Peyton Manning reading the defense. Reggie Wayne, hold corner. <laughs> Andy, wait up. Morning. Is Leslie here? Oh, man, I am so tired. I took a half shift at the hospital last night, and I had this really weird patient. Weird how? I probably shouldn't talk about it. It's one of the grossest things I've ever seen. Talk. Well, this guy came in. He got his hand stuck in a Pringles can, and he tried to cut himself out. Was there what a lot kind of blood? blade did he use? Uh, three and a half inch, serrated, buckets of blood. He passed out over his arm and slumped onto the floor. Did the bone show? Very good question, April. Answer her. Yeah, the bone showed. Everyone in the universe loves a gross medical story. Boom! I win! And so when I finally cleaned up the vomit, I found the toe. I forgot about the toe. So did we. Crazy, right? That story is awesome. Indeed. Thank you for sharing, Jenny. Anne was getting a little chummy. When people get too chummy with me, I like to call them by the wrong name to let them know I don't really care about them. That's a genius move. Thank you. You're welcome, Lester. That's a good shoe shine. What the f man? I, did, I don't know what happened. Frankly, I emitted a noise. The noise was involuntary. Sometimes a sound is just a sound, you know?